Hello and welcome to the Non-Stop Wrestling Chat. My name is Barry and this is your Christmas Day special, guys. Um, I was going to do my top 10 wrestling matches of the year today, but I decided to keep that for next year. For uh, it's next year. Well, technically it's next year. Uh, I decided to keep that for New Year's Day, so next week. And that'll be my top 10 wrestling matches of 2020. Today we're just going to go through different things. Um, go for what's happened this year. Thoughts, feelings, all that kind of stuff. Most of the thing I want to hear from is you guys. I want you to comment below. Tell me what your favourite moment is. Go through what you feel. The things that we're going to be talking about today, I'm going to tell you my feelings and stuff. And I want you to comment and tell me what you think about what happened this year in wrestling and stuff like that. Also guys, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and that beautiful notification bell. And uh, just before we get into today's show, if it sounds like I'm short of breath... Um, or if I'm breathing quite heavy. <laughs> or if I move and take my time between speaking. I've actually broke my rib. Um, I was at the gym. And doing some sparring and stuff like that. And I, I've broke my rib. It's either very badly bruised. Or it's broken. So uh, I didn't want to go to the hospital. Because they don't do anything with it. And I just decided to just, uh, just to deal with it. <laughs> I've had plenty of them in my time. So I was like you know what. I'll just deal with it. And if it gets worse over the next couple of days, then I'll go to the hospital. Especially COVID and stuff. I can't be asked to wear masks and shit. So I was like, you know what, forget it. Wear a mask every day. Look at this bird. Right, anyway. <laughs> let's get into today's show. Right, guys. What a year it's been. Fucking. Who would have guessed at January, at the Royal Rumble, we would have been... <laughs> WrestleMania would have had nobody there. It would have been done behind closed doors. It would have been cinematic matches. Undertaker finally retiring. Impact Wrestling getting good again. AEW NXT putting on strong shows. Sting going to AEW. Um, fuck. The amount of shit that has happened this year is insane. Do you know what I mean? Like, There's been so much stuff that has went on this year. It is insane. And as much as we like to bitch and bullshit about wrestling and what it does right and what it does wrong and all that kind of stuff. It has been a strong year. And, um, yeah. There's something that you need, like, it has to be said for what wrestling done is most, if you think about it, like, if you really think about it, most, um, like, theatre, cinema, movies, all stopped. Wrestling came up to the plate and decided to go at it again. Okay, the ratings are the grey and all this kind of stuff, but... They decided to change the whole way their business was done. Obviously it wasn't that much because they can just do it in the ring with no people there. But the audience have played such a big part in a wrestling match that it was so weird to see them change in such like such a short period of time. And uh, yeah, I thought wrestling, the wrestling community, the wrestling world stepped up to the mark this year. And um, it shows how much of an integral part wrestling is and should be for a society pretty much everybody copied what wrestling was doing anyway guys so first topic that I want you to comment on and uh, I'll give you my thoughts on is empty arenas and honestly when it happened I was like it's not too bad but then see what when you had like big moves and stuff like that that the commentary was still reacting to you were reacting to it, but you didn't know if anybody else was liking it. Like, there was a lot of, it seemed like a lot of missteps happened because the crowd wasn't there to, like, push people on. It felt, if it was a four-star match, it probably dropped to a three at the start. If it was a three-star match, it was a two, two-star match, one, one-star match, which was just terrible. Because they didn't have that audience playoff. Um, but it was something that had to get done because, obviously, covid but um, the empty arenas was one of the things that I felt was really bad. Oh, it was. You could argue that it was good, but uh, I didn't really enjoy it as much. And uh, but you end up forgetting there was nobody there. Eventually, you ended up just enjoying the wrestling. Is that what we're there for? And it brings me to my my second point: the Thunderdome. What are your thoughts on it, guys? So I've been on the Thunderdome. Um, I was meant to be on it for the Smackdown team. 
But a few things came up and I was unable to get to it. Um, had some work later on at night for some clients over in uh, the US, so I was up quite late. But um, yeah, Thunderdome. I like it. It's sometimes it's annoying <laughs> with the like the piped in sound and all that kind of stuff. But it's fun. I think it's just fun because it gives people like a reason to try and get on the show and stuff like that. I like how they keep it for SmackDown and Raw. NXT doesn't do it and stuff like that. But well, in fact, NXT does do it. I did. I don't know. What I'm talking about they did. They, they done it at the pay per view. I keep fucking forgetting that Woo does it. But um, I don't think arguably Thunderdome is better than empty arenas. But uh, I think both of them can can play well with each other. Empty Arena and Thunderdome. I would save the Thunderdome for pay-per-views. But on things like Raw and stuff, which are three hours long, like on SmackDown, you do the the one, I think it's main event, the film before it. And then it's the show. So you're there for a good three, four hours. And if you leave to go to the toilet, which is hard to hold three, four hours in, it's hard to hold it. But uh, they'll just cut you off. Like, I don't know. There's a lot that has to be left to be desired with that because they're still working out the... kind of working out how to make it work. But I like both of them. So pay-per-views this year, guys. Pay-per-views have actually been pretty good. Pretty solid. That's coming from... Obviously, this is a, a point that a lot of people don't want to hear. But WWE, Impact... AEW, everybody has put on pretty strong pay-per-views this year. Even though they might have not had the best matches in it, or they might not have the best storylines, whatever, it's been pretty good wrestling consistently throughout the year. NXT, AEW, Impact, WWE, like I say, they've all kind of put on consistently good shows. They've been, they've tried to just change the product and make it something that people want to actually see again, because... At the start of the year, there's obviously going to be a dip because nobody was there. But I remember at WrestleMania, there was so many people that I know that was watching it that haven't watched wrestling since the 90s. But um, yeah, I think pay-per-views were cool this year. Obviously, there is only so much you can do in an empty arena, but I think they were pretty cool. Sting going to AEW, as you guys know, I'm probably one of the biggest Sting fans out there. And I marked the shit out with this one. I marked the hell out when Sting went to AEW. We're three weeks into it. Four weeks in, whatever it is. Three weeks. Um, and people are now saying, well, oh, what are they going to do with Sting? How are they going to use him? Are they going to use him in the ring mode? Or what are they doing? People are already starting to complain, like, well, how are they going to do this with Sting and stuff like that? But the other thing I was thinking about the other day is, Back in 97, it was like a six months build, three months build, right up the Sting just appearing um, to Starcade, which was a fucking, a long, long ass build, right? I don't think people could do that nowadays. I really don't, because they want everything now. But I feel Sting's probably got his hand in with the writing and stuff like that as well. And, uh, He's, he's growing AEW's writing procedures as in, look guys, we don't need to let everybody know what I'm going to do straight away let's just pan it out, let them moan, you know because <laughs> um, back in the 97 people were moaning as well, why is he not why is he no doing anything, why is he not attacking, why is he not had a match, but um, they're asking the questions and then now obviously you've got places like Twitter and stuff which people just end up on this high horse train when they're just moaning about everything that happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what Sting does in AEW. I'm excited to see him and Darby do their stuff. I'm talking about Sting. The dream match, Sting Taker, which will never happen now. But uh, Taker finally retiring was a shock. I Honestly, I feel that maybe this was... You could even say four years too late, do you know what I mean? But... I think Taker gave everything that he had. He stayed there for the paycheck. And, uh, yeah. 
he retired at Survivor Series where he kind of came out, but I think it was a cool thing for him to retire at Survivor Series. Me personally, I would have preferred to see maybe him and Sting go at it back in 2014 and then just let it end at that. But obviously, we didn't get that. And we probably will never get it. <laughs> well, I don't think we will ever get it and I don't think I would want to maybe see it now. <laughs> the other point I've got here, guys, is um, Impact's comeback. Last year, I would check Impact I probably say since about 2012 or 13 I've checked impact on like oh this cool thing happened or this happened that was it like you never really bothered with it but they really came back this year to be fun to watch good good matches storylines no everything's good guys there's missteps they, they, they don't really use things correctly or whatever right but I enjoy Impact. I really, really do. I used to enjoy the TNA back in the day. But Impact has really became something that I look forward to watching every single week. And it is really a a kind of compact story. Like, when the nail's in the coffin for Impact Wrestling TNA, the story is obviously, they built their way up and then they just went away. I then they're coming back. Now, I know where they they used to be at that 2008, 9, 10, 11 period. But um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I really do enjoy Impact Wrestling's work. The next is how strong a goddamn year has this been for AEW and NXT? Now, I'm not saying everything they've done is great, right? But both of these shows have consistently put on a good show week in and week out. I enjoy it. I enjoy wrestling as a whole. That's something that I love, just wrestling. I like professional wrestling, and that's what I like. AEW and NXT have both put on good shows week in and week out. There's things that I might not like on each show. There's stuff that maybe I wouldn't have done that or used that decision personally. But they've both put on good shows, and the same could be said for the main WWE roster. Raw and SmackDown have had good show now they've had terrible shows this year as well but I feel Raw and Smackdown have started to fall their failings and stuff like that they've been falling short and I'd say they were falling short until Roman and Drew just took the fucking recently the watching Raw you watch it for Drew McIntyre watching Smackdown you watch it for Roman Reigns and that's the thing. Both of these guys are good. That's the reason you watch it, guys. You know what I mean? Like Drew and Roman are the two main. They, they, they're the main guys. And they are the the best just now as well. They're believable champions. They're people that just normal, any day person can buy in as a wrestler. And people that can look at look up to, kids can look up to as well, even if they're their heels or whatever, they can look up to them, adults can look at them, it's good wrestling and it's a good business decision to let these two guys ult them out, I would keep the belt on them for maybe another year, I don't know if by the time next year I'm going to say that's changed but at the moment Roman and Drew are probably the only two things that are worth watching on the main WWE product, obviously you've got other guys like Cesaro and Nakamura who one of the biggest tragedies this year is not coming with a ruse into fucking Otis. But uh, yeah, <laughs> you've got like lots of stuff like that as well. But these two guys, re- like AJ Styles is great to watch. His match at TLC with Roman, um, sorry, with Drew was great. Owens with Roman was great. And it's just been really good. Anyway guys, and Eden, ending, I'm, I fucking rambled on too much, right? I always do. Guys, I want to thank every single one of you out there. From the bottom of my heart, every single one of you people out there watching right now, <laughs> I want to thank you. It has been amazing. It honestly has been an amazing year. One of the most important things that happened this year is I set this channel up. Now, I set this channel up just to talk about wrestling. I didn't know if anybody was going to listen to me. 
interact with me. To be honest with you, I didn't. I wasn't really interested. The people were. I was just wanting to set up some a wrestling show and chat about wrestling, pretty much so I can just put my thoughts out there, um, like a kind of podcasty review thing that I do with it. But um, yeah, it's been a good year, guys. It really has. I'm unbelievably grateful for every single one of you that have hit that like button, that subscribe button, that comment on my shows, that DM me, that follow me on Twitter, Instagram, that get in touch with me, that want me on their podcast or are going to come and do stuff with me on my show, that watch my watch-alongs, that enjoy my content daily, guys. I really am thankful from the bottom of my heart for every single one of you. And you do not know how much this meant for me, by the way. There's a lot of stuff going on in my life because obviously COVID, lockdown, shutdowns, losses and stuff like that. You have saved somebody's life before you even knowing you have done it, guys. I want to thank you so much. Um, and I hope you have a great Christmas day, guys. I'm not, I'm not going to get emotional here and sit and leave you listening to me rabble on. But um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you enjoy Christmas day. Good dinner. Crack a few beers if you're old enough. If you're old enough. Um... Play some video games, watch wrestling, do what you want to do, chill out, and I'll see you here tomorrow for your SmackDown review. See you later, guys. And once again, before I let you go, thank you from the bottom of my heart. See you later, guys.